Welcome back to the project. Um, you're, I'm showing you some of the creative uh, paper clay now because we're getting to the really fun part. We're going to um, sculpt and create some features and personalize our Frida doll. So you can see that the gesso flower solution is dried and it's smoothed over to the most part, but um, it's creating a base for us to work on. So you can see me now putting on um, the creative clay and you, whatever kind of uh, product that you use. I like the clay, uh, the paper clay, because it's nice and light um, and it actually works well with adding a little bit of water to it um, if it's getting a bit too dry, but it comes out of the package really nice and supple. So I can't really show you from this angle all the features I'm making, but basically what I'm doing is forming the shape of a head the way our human head should look. And one thing to bear in mind is with a head, you will want to make the head um, shaped almost oval-like. Um, depending on the kind of doll that you, you want to have and what kind of uh, look you want to give your Frida or another doll like Frida but I start to form the shape of the head um, and also work on the support of the neck as well with the paper clay and you can see it looks pretty sad right now <laughs> but as I continue to work with it I will continue to shape it and I'm looking at shaping a chin, um, cheekbones, um, and the oval shape, the chin actually should jut out a little bit because the pink, the, the round um, styrofoam ball isn't really the shape of our heads. You can even see my head there. It doesn't look like a styrofoam ball, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, we, we, keep, um, we keep working on it and I keep building up the cheekbones. I add some eyebrows, nose, and lips. Now, you want to also think about the personality of Frida as you're forming your doll or whatever doll's character you're trying to develop. And Frida, of course, has her unibrow. So I wanted to make sure that I, I created a heavy enough brow that when I painted it later, it would look nice and pronounced. Uh, I continue to work with the clay and I add water as needed with my fingers just to keep smoothing. I want to make sure all the seams are nice and um, flush with one another and that there actually is no, there aren't any cracks showing. Um, I'm looking at, at making the, the figure as lifelike as possible while still realizing it's a doll. <laughs> um, so she's my imaginary Frida so a lot of how I form her is the way I perceive her. And um, I'm just looking at all the lines of the face and sometimes you want to turn your your figure around different angles to make sure that you're 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 kind of looking at even an even cheekbone and even ear that kind of thing so there we have her so far um, now I'm giving her a little bit of female endowments I've <laughs> She was rather flat chested, so we're just building up her chest area a little bit to give her a little bit more of a feminine form. And I'm not using very much paper clay here, it's just a little bit. Uh, so again, the smoothing is the most important part. You want to smooth it into the, the gessoed form underneath so that it's, it really is literally seamless. So there she has some more of a figure. <laughs> we'll see there's a more of a close-up. But you can see how I'm trying to form her. Um, I've given her a little bit more shoulders as well too because it was she was looking rather kind of tubular and squarish so working on giving her a little bit of shoulder also gives her a more human form. And again we continue to smooth all the the clay so that it's nice and even and as flat as possible. And there we have it. So now when you're completely satisfied with your your figure, your doll, and your the features are as you, you like them to be, then you're going to wait for your your doll to dry before we move on to the next step.
and you can see from different angles how I've tried to make the head. Um, it looks like we could do a little bit more um, work on the seams there, but for the most part, trying to blend it in so that every angle of the head looks um, like it should. And her torso, other than her arms, which will be branches, <laughs> more or less formed. And I just want to indicate here that I have added more uh, paper clay and I've smoothed the edges even more so just so that I don't have flops or, <laughs> you know, that the, the connection between the paper clay and the armature are nice and flush. This needs a little bit more work, but you can see how I've built the shoulders up a little bit more and the neck. And you, you're just really concentrating on working at the, fem the female form or form of a human being and how we're constructed. So there she is. Um, I think she's looking a little bit closer to how I want her to be now. And um, we've got some good light here, so she's still kind of rustic looking. I think the real magic will happen when we add the paint. But that's how she's looking, and um, it takes a little time, so try not to get frustrated and keep with it till you're happy with the shape of your doll. And if you have, as I said, another example to work from, that even helps more so. Um, so now we, um, now we add some paint. As you can see in the previous frame, I'm mixing uh, some gesso with uh, black paint to create a nice shade of gray. And I'm painting the, the whole figure, I'm, maybe I won't paint the whole figure, but at least the top part of uh, the figure with the gray, this gray mixture. And that will serve as, a, as an underpainting for my, uh, my figure. I just find that the the colors, particularly the flesh tones, become more luminescent. It's, uh, it's a technique that a lot of painters use to, to create more um, vibrancy and, and tone in their paintings. So I'm just giving her that other layer. Plus, that, uh, the other thing about doing this is I'm also creating more seal a sealant um, for my clay and my, uh, my paper clay and my um, armature. So I can actually paint in little cracks and so forth. Um, this doesn't take very long. It's kind of fun and I find it's very relaxing and meditative to do this. So here we go. She's painting her all over. <laughs> I won't show you the whole painting process, but I thought I would also mention about her arms because so far she's armless. And what I've done is I created, um, I used two branches that I made relatively even, and then I used the paper clay to mold some hands. Um, you might be better at making hands than, than me. I'm, it's not one of my strong points. <laughs> A lot of my figures have their hands behind their back, but anyway, these are more like little mitts, but um, they're, they're drying now, and I used a nail to, um, give some definition to the fingers. They remind me a little bit about love Minnie or Mickey Mouse hands, but anyway, we'll just see how this works out. So we've, paint, we've got the hands and we won't put them on quite yet. Everything is going to have to dry. And I hope I mentioned that before I added the gray paint, I also, um, I waited till the clay was completely dry underneath. So here we have the figure painted gray. Looks pretty boring. Um, so I thought 
this might be the time to color her up a little bit so I'm adding some turquoise. Turquoise to me um, represents the south and Mexico and uh, uh, just something about where her heritage may lie so and I like the color so I'm painting this as her dress and uh, so that's fun so I'm painting right after the gray paint is dried I'm painting right over top we have a little bit of work to do here. It's also a little bit awkward filming and I'm a lefty so trying to do this and make it look like this is the way I paint. It's not truly the way I paint. I would normally be holding the doll closer and working a little bit more um, less awkwardly with it let's say <laughs> anyway there's that's her dress and well I have the color I thought I would paint the the also part of the cage the same shade because it's always a good idea if you have your brush in hand and the color out that you may want to um, continue to use that that paint and else, elsewhere on your doll. So now we're doing the flesh tones and I usually mix a little bit of uh, white with a tiny tiny bit of red paint, um, typically a little bit of yellow and maybe a touch of brown and uh, so I just keep experimenting until I get a shade that I'm happy with and I, I encourage you to do the same. And this is fun because she's finally coming together. She's starting to look kind of human instead of like a, um, a prehistoric uh, clay person. <laughs> so here she is getting more human-like. Um, it's fun, I've, I'm using a smaller brush to do the features around her face and painting in any, any little crevices or cracks I see I'm trying to cover with paint as well too. She's still looking a little bit um, awkward but I think that will change as we get more paint happening. I love the painting process. To me, that's when um, a figure comes to life. I used to make puppets years ago, and I, I would really enjoy the part where the paint was applied because that's when the characters start to come, come forth with your puppet or your doll. And I would paint the entire head, even under the chin. Make sure you don't miss any parts. And, and don't forget to paint right over even where your hair will be because you can paint the hair on top of that. So see, she's looking a little bit more lifelike here. And now, we'll add a little bit of red for lips and cheeks. And I stress a little bit, um, it's always it, it can be easy to go crazy with the color for cheeks and lips, but being a little more subtle, it, it actually, I think, looks a bit more lifelike. And you can always add more if you need to. So I usually start out pretty light, and I, you can see I'm using a very fine brush here. And there, see how she, she her lips suddenly pop up? You can see the little corner of a Frida poster in the background. <laughs> I guess she's just there, shining over for inspiration. So again, I'm adding just a little tiny touch of red paint. Um, sometimes I'll mix a little bit of medium with it to water it down. I don't really want to put a lot of color on right now. I'm just getting the idea of the face. And so now the lips get a little bit brighter 
because I'm noticing we can go a little bit stronger here. I'm blending in the cheeks a bit. Now I'm adding some brown and some black around the eyes. And I sometimes I start with brown or watered down gray just because I don't want again too much intensity. It will mean I have to wipe it off. Uh, I might go a little bit more stronger with them like a pupil in an eye or and now the eyebrows because obviously the eyebrows are a very pronounced feature of our Frida. So even now they're not that strong, but I'm experimenting as I go along and making them, then there's room to make them darker. So right now I don't have them very dark. I'll keep going until I feel comfortable with the shades. So a little bit more brown and black. Uh, we need to uh, tread carefully with her. Um, again, I'm defining the eyes a little bit more now. And um, there's room to build as we go along, but it's better to go slowly and take your time. And somebody once told me you're only as, as good as your tools. And that can apply for many things, but I've found over the years, I, I don't always invest in a lot of expensive brushes, but I find if you have one or two really good brushes for your details, um, then you certainly, it makes the, the job a lot easier and the results are fantastic. So I'm slowly convincing myself to invest in better materials. I think it, uh, it pays off in the long run. So you can see there now, her eyes are popping even more. There's a little bit more black added. Um, the eyes are, up, the pupils were facing the same direction. And these are the kind of things you want to pay attention to. You don't want to make your doll, well, maybe you do want to make your doll cross-eyed, but it's important to look at those kind of details when you're in the, the, the molding or the sculpting stage. The other thing about Santos dolls, if you look at some of the, even the replicas, which I happen to have a replica Santos doll, and they do look rather rustic and crumbly and um, not perfect. So depending on the kind of effect that you're going for, I think for me the whole idea of a Santos doll is to make something that looks a little bit more like it's a little weathered, a little bit, um, you know, less perfect. And um, if you go, for me, if I go with that kind of uh, flavor, then I tend to be more, I tend to enjoy the process a lot more and have fun with it because I'm not so hard on myself to think, oh, it has to, every little piece has to be smooth and perfect. Well, who's perfect? And we know that Frida Kahlo wasn't perfect and that's not what made her or wonderful um, and talented and you know so um, captivating for us in these days to reflect on who she was so uh, the doll can reflect the character in the same way um, she's there's a playful aspect there's a unique aspect of, of, the, of, the, of the character you want to create now I, I'm modeling her hair almost on the Santos doll that I have, which almost looks like a cap, and I'm doing this all in black. Now 
later I'll be adding uh, an, an, an embellishment, um, actually an old um, vintage brooch that I found made of plastic, of flowers, and, I, and that seemed to be, for me, you can see her there, that seems to me what you, what represents Frida for me. Now, I will, I'll show you some pictures and close-ups of her, but I have added a little deer that I found because she was enamored with animals. And um, the brooch, of course, is part of her hairpiece. A couple of beads were added with a glue gun uh, for her earrings. And I painted a little design around the top of her blouse, as well as adding uh, a malagro which again seemed to fit in with the theme of who she was and where she came from. Um, and for her skirt, just for a little bit of extra support, I wound some wire around. I don't know if you can see it, it's pretty hard to see in this picture, but I wound some rusted wire around her cage just to add a little bit of extra support. There's probably other ways you could do it, but I realized that the hammering would not work. Um, I didn't also mention that the arms were painted and glued on. Um, again, I thought I could nail them, but being branches, they were quite delicate. Um, and what I didn't anticipate is to try to nail them would have split them in two. Um, they were quite, quite fragile. So you may want to do your own interpretation of arms. This was uh, something that I tried on the spot. I'm, I'm still happy with the results. Um, pretty well all of Frida's uh, embellishments are hot glued and they seem to be holding up quite well. I do, um, I did spray her with a, a matte varnish to preserve her, her sheen. <laughs> and um, I added a little wire at the back of her brooch on her head to prop it up. So enjoy making your own Frida. I encourage you to create your own doll in your own way and have fun. Thanks for doing the project with me today. Adios. Stop, thief! Stop! She got my doll! I can see you! <laughs>